clap for Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. The one who owns you. The one who loves you. The one who watches over you. The one who walks with you. Who talks with you. Who eats with you. I don't know if you know that God sleeps with you. Wakes up with you. Stands with you. Walks with you. Talks with you. If you don't know, take it from me. He literally eats with me. I know it. Hallelujah. Please take your seats as kings and priests in God's presence. Hallelujah. Welcome to the assembly of God's holy nation. Good morning, champions. You are God's holy nation. That's what First Peter says. It's made us a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Men and women who have been called to live holy unto God. Today we are still continuing on our series on begotten of love. And we are going to be examining, last week we looked at the call to think differently. This week we are looking at the call to live differently. Turn to somebody seated closest to you and someone that's our neighbor. Say neighbor. Ah, bring it on. Say neighbor. You are begotten of love. To live differently. Say to the other neighbor, neighbor, you are begotten of love. To live differently. Say this time to yourself. Say, I am called to be holy. For my father is holy. Yes, you are begotten of a holy God. First John chapter 4 verse 7 and First Corinthians chapter 13 verse 6. The scriptures that we have been on. I don't know when God will move us on. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. And then First Corinthians chapter 13 has been giving us what the Bible, what God means by love, right? what the Bible means by love. It says love, verse 6, love does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness. I'm reading from the Amplified Classic, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. I decided to break that into two, so today we'll look at 6a. Love does not rejoice at injustice and an unrighteousness. Love finds no delight in what is, is wrong. If you have ever in your life found yourself secretly or openly rejoicing at the news that some kind of disaster or misfortune has befallen your enemy or somebody that hurt you in the past, somebody who treated you unjustly in the past, this morning Paul is talking to you. This text sits in the realm of Abasimien Amadu. Good riddance to bad rubbish saves her right. And most times we use that when it comes to somebody who behaves or who, who just goes around hurting people and one day you hear that your God has shown up. And now the person has swallowed his own pill and we are like, Abbasid Mienamado saves him right. If you've ever, whether in your thoughts or verbally said it, Paul is addressing all of us. New King James renders that part A, that love does not rejoice in iniquity. NIV says love does not delight in evil. To rejoice in iniquity or delight in evil is simply to take pleasure in wrongdoing, to enjoy unrighteousness, to celebrate injustice of any form, whether injustice done to a friend or to a foe. And Paul is saying, when you look at the Greek sense of that verse, that love absolutely does not rejoice in iniquity. Love absolutely does not take pleasure in unrighteousness. Love absolutely is not found in wrongdoing. Love absolutely does not delight in evil. If we leave it there, we, are, we may be tempted to just walk away and feel, I don't delight in evil. I've been a Christian these 60 years. So how do we rejoice in iniquity? How do we delight in evil? Or how do we take pleasure in wrongdoing? 
We do this in innumerable ways. I cannot even imagine to name him, go ahead to name them. The Corinthian church in chapter 5 of 1 Corinthians, they, they, they expressed their own delight in iniquity by celebrating proudly, proudly celebrating, tolerating, and explaining away incest. Incest was going on in their midst, and they were wearing it around like a bat. On our part, we do it sometimes by supporting or, en or encouraging or simply wishing somebody to get revenge, if I were you, I will not take it. We show our delight in evil by celebrating the downfall and adversity of our enemy. Or simply deriving joy from something that is harmful, negative, or undesirable for others. It's not happening to you, but he's a bad man, he deserves it. Paul says, you are rejoicing in iniquity you are delighting in evil we rejoice in iniquity by finding pleasure when others ruin or disgrace themselves or feeling vindicated when somebody who had wronged us now commits a bigger crime and is caught and humiliated probably you try to explain that that person was in the wrong and the person had acted very good and now abasimfo has made the person to do it on a bigger stage um, stage we rejoice in iniquity by searching out ways to get away with our own bad behavior. Finding ways to cover up and smoothen out personal sins is rejoicing in unrighteousness. Rejoicing in truth demands that we face the truth about ourselves. We face the truth about our lives and we receive the help that we need. We take pleasure in wrongdoing by celebrating vices in other people. Let's say you have a mean boss that everyone is afraid of. One day, a new specialist staff gets posted from another branch to your office to work under your boss. This new staff is everything but compliant. He's puffy, arrogant, insolent, boastful, and yet proficient at his job. Since he is a specialist in a rare area, the option of letting him go from the company is not on the table and your boss is literally exasperated. What do we do? You secretly rejoice that Abbasimfo has appointed an evil man, God has appointed an evil man to oppose your boss so he can teach him a lesson. Paul says, deriving pleasure from the display of envy, boastfulness, root, root, rudeness, selfishness, irritability, or censoriousness, de deriving pleasure from evil, is not love. He said, having fun or taking delight in the triumphs of evil is neither the way nor the response of love. For love finds no delight in evil. We rejoice in unrighteousness by walking in unbelief, failing to obey and follow the truth, and giving approval to people who practice unrighteousness. I can give you a million in, in quotes, example on that line, but we don't have time. We cannot afford to, to go around calling evil good and good evil, presenting darkness as light and light as darkness, and saying bitter is sweet and sweet is bitter, because Paul says that is rejoicing in iniquity. Love does not celebrate injustice. Love does not enjoy injustice. How do we enjoy injustice? by enjoying the pain of others and celebrating it as our victory and vindication. We enjoy injustice by broadcasting or celebrating people's failures or blunders. Have you ever noticed that when a minister, a pastor makes a mistake or does something disgraceful to his life and profession, the people who broadcast his failures the most are members of different households of faith. Have you noticed it? Men and women who call them, who, go, who call God Father. Today's text is another call to a deeper self-examination. Ask yourself. You can take it down so that during your times of personal reflection, you can ask yourself these questions. What do I enjoy? What gives me pleasure? Do I enjoy hearing dirty things about other people? Do I feel better just knowing that the mighty man or mighty woman who is being praised publicly all over isn't so mighty privately? Do I take delight in seeing people exact vengeance on others? 
Do I celebrate when I hear bad reports about someone who wronged me in the past? Or do I feel sorrow to hear about the sufferings and misfortunes of that person? What do I really delight myself in? What gladdens my heart? You see, we are begotten of a God who does not delight in wickedness. We cannot afford to be people who take pleasure in wrongdoing or who support what is wrong. For the God of whom we have been begotten, he does not delight in wickedness. His judgment is not something you and I can take lightly or personalize it as, as our victory. It should strike a note of fear when we hear that God has judged somebody. The author of Proverbs understood this, this so well that he warned in Proverbs 24, 17 to 18. My mother used to quote this when we were children. Say, do not rejoice when your enemy, enemies fall. Don't be happy when they stumble. For the Lord will be displeased with you and will turn his anger away from them. As we rise for our confessions today, I invite you to submit your heart to God for a surgical exchange. Ask God to take your own heart and give you his own. A heart that finds no pleasure in wrongdoing. A heart that does not delight in iniquity. A heart that does not celebrate unrighteousness. A heart that does not dance when something bad happens to another person. We are a generation where people bring out their cell phones to cover to videograph evil instead of going in to help. If you saw some of the pictures the media put out, you see young people, something bad is happening. Nobody is, is interested in intervening. Everybody just wants to capture it on their phones. We want to use it to drive traffic to our walls. Love does not delight in iniquity. Love does not celebrate injustice. Whether it is done to a friend or is done to a foe. Rise as we affirm the word of God this morning. Say this with me. I am begotten of love to live differently. Let it come from your heart. I do not gloat over the other people's sin. Neither do I rejoice when others go wrong. I am dead to self and alive to Christ. I am not in love with the world. The love of the Father is in me. I love others because God first loved me. I am the son of the God who is love. The love of God in me does not celebrate unrighteousness. Neither does it find pleasure in injustice. I turn away from all forms of wickedness. I let go every ulterior motive and selfishness. I see life through God's own perspective. I am begotten of love to manifest love. I am called to think and act like Jesus. I have God's nature of love in me. I respond differently to the plight of others, whether they be friends or foe. I respond with the energies of prayer and intercession. I have genuine regard for the good of other people. My life of love points others to God. I am a vessel of God's love to my world. I am empowered to manifest Christ daily. He helps me to love my neighbor as myself. My life of love brightens and seasons the lives of the people around me. I am configured in Christ Jesus. I love righteousness and hate lawlessness. I am kind, compassionate, and empathetic. God's love 
has taken up residence in me. I am a reflection of the character of God. My actions point people to the goodness of God. I have been commanded to love like Jesus. I will glorify God by living as I should. Open your mouth and just tell God in your own words, I am committed to walking in your ways. But well, give me a heart of love and truth. Awaken your love in me. Help me to see men like you do. Help me to see people like you do. Help me to love like you do. Help me to love to see people like you do. Show me how to love like you have loved me. Open my eyes to see the things that I unseen. Heal my heart and make it clean. Break my heart for what breaks yours. Teach me and mold me into a loving representation of your son, Jesus. Give me heart. Give me your heart for those around me. Say, Father, awaken your love in me. I want to love as you do. I am your house. Let your love take up residence in me. Say, Lord, I am your house. Lord, I am your house. I'm your tabernacle. Let your love take up residence in me. Father, I am your tabernacle. Let your nature be seen in me. Let the world see Christ in me. Let the world hear Christ in my voice. Let the people around me see Christ in me. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.